So the men's singles finalists waiting in the wings. The left-handed Kento Momota, the defending champion, the world champion, the world number one, up against the number six seed, Jonathan Christie, who won the Asian Games gold medal last year. What a prospect for this men's singles final. But before the final gets underway, we should be able to have a look at the race to Guangzhou standings, the race to the World Tour finals in December later this year. Well, look very focused, doesn't he? Just trying to block out what's around him. But when we look at those race to Guangzhou standings, uh, we can see that the two finalists from last week, Choti and Chen and Anna's Antonsen, are not even on that top ten list. Agumtapon Nguang Chalon, after his semi-final in Jakarta, moved into the top ten at number nine. And I can tell you that the top five on that list have contested 13 World Tour Tournament finals between them. Now, whether Jonathan Christie, who's currently at number two, whether he wins or loses today's final, will move up to number one. Kento Momota will also move up, but even if he wins, he cannot overtake Jonathan Christie. But they both move up one place, which forces Victor Axelson, who's been in three finals this year, down to number three. Ginting will move up one place above Lindan, so there'll be quite a few changes in that list after this week in Tokyo. So when we look at the men's singles draw, four different nationalities by quarter-final stage, three seeds only, one in the bottom half, but those four different nationalities made it through to the semi-final stage. And incredibly, it's the eighth consecutive year that we've had four different nationalities in the men's singles semi-finals here at the Japan Open. It's only the sixth time that's happened at the 15th World Tour tournament this year. So that was pretty special, but as you can see from semi-final stage, the two seeded players, Jonathan Christie and Kento Momota, came through to the final. We should mention that Victor Axelsen, two-time finalist, winner in 2017, having been beaten in the final two years prior to that, had to pull out before the start of the tournament. We also lost the number two seed, Chi Wu Chi, before play got underway because he picked up a very nasty injury in Jakarta last week but three Indonesian players, three from Denmark in the quarterfinal stage. Well, I can't remember the last time we had three Danes in a quarterfinal of this level of event, this Super 750 event, the second highest tier of tournament on the HSBC BWF World Tour. So the stage is set for the men's singles final and there's no doubt who the fans will be cheering for and that is going to be this man the left-hander Kento Momoto so Steen as far as this men's singles final is concerned Kento Momoto well he had a stunning year last year didn't he 10 finals winning seven of them from just 16 individual tournaments. And when you think at the start of the year, uh, because he was coming back from suspension, he was playing events like the Vietnam International Challenger. Yeah. What he's done in the past 18 months has been nothing short of sensational. Yeah, it has it's really come back to, um, to dominate men's singles. He hasn't won everything, but he's really, really dominated. Yeah, and to just emphasize that point, he's in his sixth sixth final in his ninth tournament this year. So that's two thirds of all tournaments he's played this year. He he's, re final. he's reached the final. This man, well, he won the Asian Games gold medal last year, and that's shot him to stardom. But we're just about ready for the announcements for today's men singles final. It's very spectacular the way they bring the players onto court. So no doubt that the left-handed defending champion is the favorite 
for this event. Let's just quickly get your views, though, on Anthony Ginting, Steen, because Anthony Ginting, he's in his third final this year, first two finals, Super 300 events, New Zealand and Australia, but he won them both. Yeah, Jonathan Christie. Jonathan Christie, sorry. He did. Um, yeah. Obviously, he's been playing well in, in those two um, tournaments. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure of seeing him in, um, in Australia. Um, I also saw him a little bit last week in Indonesia Open. It feels like both Jonathan Christie and actually Anthony Ginting, who played a great match against uh, Momota earlier in the tournament, it feels like they are um, on their way back to really, really good shape. P but perhaps not quite there yet. Yeah. We'll have to see today. Um, Christy is... Um, He's looking strong. I thought he was looking very strong in his semi-final against the veteran Jan or Jorgensen. Yeah. But... He's up against tough opposition today. I think Jan was a spent force. Um, I think you're probably right. And um, let's see what... Um, what he has to uh, to bring in this um, final here. Hopefully he has something uh, good so that we can have um, a great match. And um, he was the one who won last time they played these two uh, yeah. men here. Yeah. Um, and that was in the Malaysian Super 750 event, the first of the 750 events this year. And for Jonathan Christie, well, he's become the fifth different player from Indonesia to reach the final here. Adi Wiranata, Haryanto Abi, Joko Supriyanto, 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 and Sonidwi Kunshora. So when you look at those previous four men in the final, they're all mega stars and huge stars as far as Indonesian badminton is concerned. Yeah. For him to add his name to that is pretty special. There's one thing that comes to my mind that's missing. Taufik Hidayat. Yeah, you're Apparently absolutely he's, right. Uh, never really uh, done that well. No, but I think he was in the final here. I think you're absolutely right. Well, I'm not quite sure what the delay is for bringing the players onto centre stage. But by the level of music coming up, I think we are just about ready the men's singles finalists onto centre stage. The arena in darkness as the giant screen shows pictures yeah. of Kento Momota. Defending champion Kento Momota, the world number one, the reigning world champion, making his seventh appearance here at his home events in his second consecutive title, trying to win his second consecutive title here in his second consecutive final. Final in his ninth time. 
tournament of the year. Jonathan Christie, the number six seed here in Japan, the Asian Games gold medalist. Trying to become the fifth different player from Indonesia to lift the Japan Open men's singles title. Kento Momoto shakes hands with the court officials Trish Gubb from New Zealand and uh, Fine Dathan from oh. India. Uh, we can see that this is the fourth meeting between the two players. But as you were saying, Steen, the last time they met was in the second round of the Malaysian Super 750 event earlier this year. 46 minutes before Christie won in two straight games. So that the magnificent trophy and uh, I first need to say that of course that I got the statistic wrong because there's four different players from Indonesia who've won the Japan Open, not who have contested the final, who have won the title and Taufik Hidiat, whilst he contested the final, did not win the Japan Open title. <laughs> So, so many hopes and expectations of this man, the left-handed Kento Mamolta. 24 years of age, born in Kagawa on Shikoku Island, the smallest of the four main islands here in southeast Japan. World number one for a 44th consecutive week. And he has beaten Hans Christian Wittinghus in the first round. Close second game, 55 minutes for that. Then last week's semi-finalist, Wang Chalon of Thailand. A quarter-final against the number seven seed. That was a magnificent match. One minute shy of an hour and a half against Anthony Ginting. 21-15 in the deciding game. And the semi-final yesterday against the unseeded Sai Pranith of India. So to his opponent, Jonathan Christie is only 21 years of age, born in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. He is enjoying his seventh consecutive week as world number one. His fourth appearance here at the Japan Open and prior to this year, he had never got through the first round of this tournament. In his third final of the year, having won his first two in New Zealand and Australia. He beat Awi Hingsunong of Thailand in the opening round. Then Ankar Long of Hong Kong. Then two Danes back to back. Last week's beaten finalist Anas Antonsen in two straight games. And yesterday's semi final against the beaten finalist from three years ago, Jano Jorgensen. Jorgensen incidentally playing his first Japan Ready Open since he was in the final. Second consecutive Japan Open final for Kento Mamata. Trish Garp, as I was telling you, of New Zealand's in the umpire's chair. And find that in India. Service judge. Well, two consecutive finals is pretty impressive, but I can tell you. 
Karyanto Abi and Lu Chong Wei were in four consecutive finals each. And I also thought about it uh, with Li Chong Wei. What is it? Has he got 12 Malaysian Open titles or whatever? 12. <laughs> That's and and six Japan Open titles. On my right, <laughs> so Jonathan there's a bit of a Indonesia. way to go for a more than yet. Yeah. And on my left, Kento Momoto, Japan. Kento Momoto to serve, love all. Play. Right into the corner, that's just a magnificent so shot in the very first rally from Jonathan Christie. One, love. in the first round this year to Ang Kar Long. say that they're a little bit similar it's not that they play the same way obviously one is right-handed one is left-handed but but um, they like to uh, to build things uh, patiently in, in the rallies and both have the attack that um, can uh, get them uh, through their opponents I think uh, Momota's uh, defense is uh, perhaps a little bit um, stronger than uh, than Christie's. Uh, it's got a really, really nice touch around um, the front court, um, Kenta Momota. Christie's got a good smash, uh, very physically strong. Uh, no doubt about it. Running of the day, I think.
hosting Five. two long rallies to uh, Christie. Promoter to have more of those angles than um, Christy. goes into the lead. That's a super run, and what a wonderful shot from Jonathan Christie. Service over. There was the defensive shot you were talking about. Six. Look at that Seven. angle, though. The sky is dropped.
that did the damage. Kicked the top of the tape and trickled over. Seven. Nothing Jonathan Christie could do. Normally got a fantastic touch on it. Kenton Water. Not that uh, Christie is bad at the net at all. Just uh, rate Momoto a little bit better, but uh, you're an example that this man definitely has uh, some touch in as well. I feel though, that if we have to take another one into the comparison, then Anthony Ginting, uh, when he's in absolute top shape, is uh, really, really good at the, the net. Drop shot to bring in forehand next. He simply didn't get there in time. And we haven't Eight seen. Um, what, there's Ten. been periods Eight. where we haven't really seen Momota play this attacking style where I feel that he's been uh, uh, having nursing some small injuries and where he's chosen to play more patient game but um, he really can attack as well advantage on a run of three straight points here at the mid-game interval of the opening game Timing um, the efficient playing time here in the first part of the first game because um, I saw an um, interesting stat on the final in Indonesia last week with uh, 12, the match time between Anas Antonsen and Cho Chin Chen was 91 minutes but it was only 20 minutes of um, efficient playing time. Here the first game has lasted uh, 13 minutes, 12 minutes. And the efficient playing time has been uh, four minutes and um, 20 seconds. So there is um, a big difference Nine. between the actual match time so and the Nine. efficient playing time. Twelve. We have yeah. to say that. He comes forward, torso upright, racket arm outstretched, yeah. perfect poise, 
and then he plays a perfect net shot. When Momota plays best, he's a bit more spectacular um, to see from a spectator point of view, but... Um, Christy, he can, uh, he can be really, really efficient in his game. 14, 10. Christie's coach. Well, in a blink of an eye, suddenly opened up. A five point cushion. And it was a telling um, shot, the last one here, where I feel this is this is where uh, Christie is at the moment in his build up to either the Olympics or the World Championships next week. That was going to go wide, that one I thought. That, that he couldn't really so get to that one. He's He doesn't have that 11, extra speed 15. right now. I feel that he's in. Still within a training period, even though he's uh, he's mm. playing tournaments. Maybe that's also the case for Momota. I wouldn't be surprised at all yeah. if that was the case. I just feel that uh, he's not as fluctuating in, in levels as um, actually both uh, Christy and, uh, and Ginting are. Yeah, but well, it was such a short lift. Momota had to guess one way or the other as to where the smash was going to come and got it completely wrong. Look at that super net shot again from Christie. maybe uh, stretching it a little bit because we've also seen Jonathan Christie play some really really good net shots yeah. but but added together over a long time I would still so think uh, if I could uh, go in a, in a shop and buy a net game I think I would uh, go for Momotas uh, over Christie's provided that the price was the same <laughs> and I would I would think really really uh, careful uh, in terms of Momota and Ginting That's what's so fascinating. There's so many different factors yeah. that are influencing the uh, result, and, uh, and that, that's why it's never dull to see uh, a badminton match. Well, it's rarely dull to see a badminton match. There. 
service over. So this would go against the uh, theory that uh, 14, that, 19. Uh, Mumota has a, a great touch on the front court, but over the long run, yeah, uh, it's it's pretty good. Play. Point opportunities. Point. Six Fourteen. of them for Mamota. Service over. Fifteen. Twenty. He's uh, trying to conserve as much energy as possible, Jonathan Christie. We saw him in the beginning of this first game win uh, two long rallies against Omosa, yet he hasn't really tried to extend the rallies uh, the way I read this uh, first game here. So um, that's why I feel he's not um, in the best of shape, even though he's in the final here. On his third game point opportunity, Kento Momota takes the opening game against Jonathan Christie. 21 16, the scoreline. 22 minutes in duration. It's a little bit strange because I mean there's not that long time to um, to the World Championships. But if you're practicing hard all the way up to the beginning of your own tournament, Indonesia Open, maybe even uh, whilst it's going on, then your body don't have uh, time to recover. And um, second game. He he Love looks. All. He looks different from when he won uh, the uh, Asian Games last year and was in absolutely uh, top shape for uh, Jonathan Christie. So, the semi-final in Indonesia and the final here, that's that's a good accomplishment. Um, but um, there was also two of the uh, strong contenders who was not here at the moment, uh, Victor Axelsen and Shi Yu Chi. So, I'm not sure whether no. Axelsen was in the upper or lower uh, part of the draw, but, um, he was in the um, the upper. Yeah, but Chi Chi in the lower part of the door yeah. where Antonsen came through um, and eventually Jorgensen. So sometimes um, you just have a little bit of an easier path, um, like in 
my opinion, on Sand Thompson had last week in Indonesia Open. Mm. Um, and of course, you have to uh, have the good to take advantage of it. Yeah, when an opportunity opens up, yeah. whether it's the misfortune of a player getting injured, as was the case last week, yeah. love. or pull-outs, or whatever the reason. Sport is about grasping the opportunities. Steve, because the previous one where he tried to kill it didn't work for him, no. his opponent got it back, but he's still got the courage to go for it again. And you've got to do that because otherwise you take possibilities away from your own game. I mean, if he'd left um, the net open, then Christie would be able to play back at him yeah. uh, over and over again so in the next uh, eight, ten rallies Three. before you figure oh. out, oh, it's important that I... Uh, Take a step forward again, but reacting immediately um, now it's, in my opinion, Momota who's got a little bit um, the advantage at the net in this match. Should earn him some extra lifts from uh, Jonathan Christie. So it's over. of the good touch to put in the, the box Quite on Jonathan please. Christie's side. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. It seems to me like Christie is reluctant to 
to try and increase uh, pace and it can be for many reasons it can be for tactical reasons it could also be because he feels that he can't follow suit um, physical wise the difficult thing about um, commenting a badminton match. We don't really know these players uh, long term plan neither the mid term or long term plan. What is it that we're actually focusing on? Yeah. Oh, some of them are they so strong in their mindset that they can already now start building for the Olympics or solely be focused on the Olympics or they're focusing on next um, month's World Championship will be much wiser when we see the World Championships who's uh, playing well there. One left. Well, Momoto was going to leave one on his backhand so side. I think Sud he should have. Suddenly decided to play Five, it. There, seven. look at that. Yeah. Do you think he should have left it? Yeah, I think so. One of Christie's feet are on the tram line on the back of the court.
Actually, they didn't even that. react to that. Ten. Eight. Linden like cross just, smash. Just going through my head. Yeah. Linden five times finalist at this Japan Open, three time winner. That's gone long. And the exact same scoreline at the mid game interval here in the second game as it was in the first. Three point advantage to this man. Kento Momota. Momota's only lost one game this year after winning. Uh, well, he lost one match after winning the first game uh, this year. That was uh, the final of the uh, Sudirman Cup, where he also lost his first ever team match to uh, Uchi. We had a men's double when I was coaching Denmark who never ever lost a team match. That was uh, Lars Paske and uh, Jonas Rasmussen. So. Apparently, when we put them on the Jonathan. list, we could always count one. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, come here, please. Now the umpire's going to have a word with Christy. You must listen. You cannot be that late back to court. Play. Good umpiring. 11-8. He's going to have to sit after the match Play. and write for one hour. I cannot be late back on court. <laughs> I cannot be late back on court. Well. I'm with the umpire on that. Yes, me too. But, um... She's well, you, you have to tell them. You have to tell the players. She has wow. the discretion to, um... I think... I think, actually, it's a red card if you're late back. If you're not back after the, um, 60 seconds, so it's a red card. So it's just take the red card out of the pocket. 13, but all the other umpires, they have to, uh, Sort of follow suit and back her up. Oh, look at that touch. Wonderful from Mamolta. at the moment like there was nothing left in uh, the tank with Daniel Jorgensen yesterday mm. that's a good rally though away from becoming the fifth player to win the men's singles title here at the Japan Open in consecutive years. And with net play like that, it's no wonder he's got twice as many points at the moment than his opponent in this second game, that is. Eight straight points. Trademark of uh, 
almost all the Indonesians is that they're so strong in their forearm. service returns whenever possible on uh, low services much easier to uh, disguise your shot service over. 19, two points away from his second consecutive title here at the Japan Ocean Service over. 11, 19. Over. A little glimpse 12, into what could have been. 20. I seem to recall it was somewhat similar scoreline last year when we played the uh, final minute against the. Uh, it, it was just going through my mind that it could possibly be one point more that Christie had scored per <laughs> game on, because last year it was at 14 and 11 that Romolta won the final. No, it's a couple of points more in the opening game, wasn't it? Well, that was a fine performance. 
Match won by Kento Momoto, 21-16. A little bit of a shaky start when he was 2-5 down, but really since then, he has shown his class today. Joins the likes of Lee Chong Wei, who won three consecutive titles, Adi Wiranato, who won two, Peter Gaeda, who won two consecutive, and Lin Dan as well. Now, Kenta Momota has joined that list of greats uh, to win two consecutive titles here at his home against the Japan Open. Forty-four minutes in total for his victory. And he looks very pleased in Let's hear what he has to say. 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 見事連覇達成です。今どんなお気持ちですか。So this is the second title in this tournament. How do you feel now? え、そうですね。もう先週はあまりいい結果が出せなくて、ちょっと二連覇できるかなっていうすごい自信はなかったんですけど、コートに入ってこんな多くの方に応援してもらって。Sign of just how much this title has meant to him. え、すごい苦しかったんですけど、え、皆さんのおかげで踏ん張ることができました。ありがとうございました。Last week the result wasn't good enough, and I wasn't confident whether I can win or not. But thanks to your, all of your support, um, it, the game was very tough. But uh, thank you very much for your support. Next year, the same stage the Tokyo Olympics will be held. Today, the people who are here are going to be very proud of you. Tokyo 2020 next year and,、uh, in this venue. So please give a word for your fans. ジャパンオープンは2連覇することができたんですけど、このままでは多分本番のオリンピックでは勝てないと思うので、もっともっとレベルアップして、たくさんの方に楽しんでもらえるようなプレーをしたいと思いますし、多分一人では成し遂げることができないので、これからも多くの方に支えてもらいながら頑張っていきたいなと思います。よろしくお願いします。So、we got the second title in this tournament, but、uh, this current situation is not enough. So I will do my best and make an effort. So please give us support more. Daihatsu Yonex Japan Open, Miyoto Renpa Tasse, Momota Kento Sensei, Desta. Well, I think his reaction, an indication of not just the physical effort to win the title this week. But the mental and emotional effort, winning back-to-back -back titles, very tough indeed. And when the fans expect this huge pressure on the shoulders of the home player, well, it means that Japanese players have won both the singles titles, and that's the third time that that has happened. In a world tour event after the Thailand Masters last year and the German Open this year, and when you think that Japanese players only won both singles titles once during the years of the Super Series, and that was the 2015 Super Series finals, this is pretty special this year for Japan and Japanese players. But spare a thought for Jonathan Christie, who today. Took his career a little further. His first ever Super 750 title. But a big smile from the champion for a second consecutive year, Kento Momota.
Anna's plate and the gold medal once again for Kintal Momorza. His 24th career title. His fifth this year. champion once more, Kento Momota. A bit of smile too from Jonathan Christie and so there should be. He's had a wonderful tournament here in Tokyo. Momota was feeling the pressure this week to retain his title. I can't imagine what the pressure will be in 12 months' time come the Olympic Games. That will be massive. Yeah. Well, he's dealt with the pressure this week. Assumes, barring any catastrophe of an injury or any such misfortune, and he will presumably qualify for the Olympics and be probably the favourite in his campaign. He'll be in day four of the badminton competition in a year's time, still in the group stage. First Olympics, probably. Yeah. Well, his job might be done for the day, but we've still got two more finals to come. And coming up is mixed doubles and Jordan and Octavianti in their fifth World Tour tournament final, looking for their first ever World Tour title. Up against the 2017 champions, Wang Yilu and Wang Dongping of China. <laughs> 